Remember the neon lights of the arcade, along with the addictive thrill of chasing high scores? Or that extravagant glamour photo shoot you had at the mall? Well, these are just the tip of the iceberg. Today, we are on a mission to trigger your nostalgia and relieve 13 moments that defined the 1980s. Let's get started. Arcades in the 1980s were like magical kingdoms for kids and teens. Picture this, rows of flashy machines glowing in neon lights, ready to transport you into different worlds. Games like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong were especially favorites. Arcades were often found in malls, bowling alleys, or dedicated joints. These arcades weren't just about games. They were hubs for socializing. Friends gathered around these machines, trying to beat high scores and cheering each other on. It was a place to show off skills and make new friends, bonding over a shared love for gaming. For youth culture, arcades were everything. They shaped friendships and fueled competition. Kids saved up quarters just to spend hours in these vibrant spaces, trying to conquer their favorite games. Number 2. Blockbuster Video Blockbuster Video revolutionized how people rented movies and became a household name in the 1980s. The first Blockbuster store opened in 1985 in Dallas, Texas, founded by David Cook. The stores had rows upon rows of VHS tapes neatly arranged by genre, making it a paradise for movie lovers. Blockbuster introduced the concept of movie rental membership, allowing customers to pay a fixed fee for renting multiple films over a certain period. Believe it or not, this was a groundbreaking idea at the time. Blockbuster's success skyrocketed due to its convenience. People could rent movies for a few days, enjoy them at home, and return them without late fees. Additionally, Blockbuster expanded rapidly, opening stores nationwide and internationally. Next, we have the Rubik's Cube, a colorful, brain-teasing puzzle that took the 1980s by storm. It was invented by a Hungarian professor named Erno Rubik in 1974 to help students understand three-dimensional geometry. The cube was covered in squares of six different colors. Red, blue, green, orange, yellow, and white. The goal was to twist and turn the cube until each side displayed just one color. The cube was a challenge that tested your patience and problem-solving skills. People carried it everywhere, trying to solve it during breaks or on bus rides. There were even competitions to see who could solve it the fastest. Some even figured out special moves and algorithms to quickly crack the cube's code. And that's not all. Books, tutorials, and even TV shows were dedicated to mastering it. The industry around this cube boomed, with millions sold globally. Since its release, over 450 million cubes have been sold worldwide making it the world's best-selling puzzle game and toy. At number four, we have glam metal, also known as hair metal. Rocked the music scene in the 1980s with its flashy style, catchy tunes, and larger-than-life performances. The music was characterized by its upbeat, party-ready anthems. Bands like Motley Crue, Poison, Def Leppard, Bon Jovi, and Guns N' Roses were some of the big names that defined the genre. What made glam metal famous was its ability to create an extravagant spectacle. Musicians wore spandex, leather, and outrageous makeup, and their music videos were like mini-movies filled with fast cars, beautiful women, and wild parties. The lyrics often revolved around love, rebellion, and living life to the fullest. Glam metal bands were notorious for their energetic live shows. The genre's massive popularity led to sold-out concerts and a dedicated fan base. Up next, we have aerobics, a popular exercise craze in the 1980s, was revolutionized by fitness guru Jane Fonda. Her goal was to make exercise trendy and accessible to people everywhere. The appeal of aerobics lay in its energetic and rhythmic movements set to music. These workouts focused on cardiovascular fitness, it incorporated exercises like dance steps, jumping jacks, and leg lifts designed to get the heart pumping. One of the reasons aerobics became a sensation was its inclusivity. People of all ages and fitness levels could participate. Fonda's workout videos, with their catchy routines and easy-to-follow instructions, brought aerobics into homes worldwide. Moreover, instructors and participants wore colorful outfits, adding to the fun and excitement. 
leotards, leg warmers, and sweatbands made their place in the 80s fashion industry. At number 6 we have Cabbage Patch Kids, created by Xavier Roberts, burst onto the scene in the early 80s. These adorable dolls were unique with their soft bodies, chubby cheeks, and signature adoption certificates. Initially, they were sold at craft shows under the name Little People. Soon after, they debuted in a store in Atlanta, Georgia, and their popularity exploded. What made Cabbage Patch Kids special was their individuality. Each doll had a different name and backstory, making them feel like one-of-a-kind companions. In no time, they became the must-have toy. By the end of 1983, Cabbage Patch Kids were breaking sales records. They were selling faster than any toy before, symbolizing 80s nostalgia. Number 7. MTV, or Music Television, debuted on August 1, 1981. It began with the airing of Video Killed the Radio Star by The Buggles. MTV was a groundbreaking concept. It brought music videos to the forefront, revolutionizing how people consumed music. It wasn't just about songs, it was a visual experience, blending music with storytelling through videos. Initially, the playlist was limited, but soon the network expanded its library, featuring a diverse range of music genres and artists. The channel skyrocketed in popularity, captivating audiences with its 24-7 music video programming. VJs or video jockeys like Martha Quinn and Alan Hunter became household names. They introduced videos, hosted shows, and interviewed musicians. As the 80s progressed, MTV evolved as well. The channel introduced shows like Yo! MTV Raps and Headbangers Ball, catering to hip-hop and rock fans. Number 8. Glamour Shoots Have you ever seen those extravagant photos of your parents or relatives? You know those glamorous shots where they seemed like they stepped out of a magazine? That's the magic of glamour shots. It was the 80s trend that turned everyday folks into models for a day. In the 1980s, Heading to the mall for a glamour shot session was a special occasion. These photo sessions were a chance to experience a touch of celebrity. Each session usually included shots featuring stylish hats and props, like feather boas and gloves, enhancing the glamour quotient. Heavy makeup was part of the look, creating an exaggerated but stylish appearance. The studios had these signature backgrounds, creating a consistent and stylish backdrop for the glamorous transformations. It was like a mini makeover with heavy makeup creating a dramatic and stylish look. Even today, while the exaggerated accessories and massive hair of the 80s have taken a back seat, the essence of glamour photography persists. Up next we have waterbeds. Waterbeds were a unique and trendy sleeping option in the 1980s. They consisted of a large vinyl mattress filled with water, providing a different kind of comfort and support compared to traditional mattresses. The appeal of waterbeds lay in their innovative design. They could conform to the body's shape, offering a customized sleeping experience. They gained popularity due to their perceived therapeutic benefits, relieving pressure points and potentially reducing back pain. However, despite their initial success, waterbeds faced a decline and eventual extinction. One major issue was their maintenance and installation challenges. Setting up a waterbed required expertise and leaks or punctures could cause significant damage. Additionally, concerns arose regarding hygiene and temperature control. As a result, the high maintenance and associated costs gradually led to a decrease in demand. In the late 1980s, nearly one out of every four mattresses sold was waterbed. But the industry dried up in the 1990s. Waterbeds make up only a small fraction of overall bed and mattress sales today. Now, let's discuss some statement fashion accessories of the 1980s. In this era, fashion took a bold turn, becoming a colorful and flamboyant expression of the times. Shoulder pads emerged as a defining trend in 80s fashion. They weren't just padding, they were power. Initially introduced in women's jackets and blazers, they soon found their way into dresses, blouses, and even t-shirts. The evolution of shoulder pads stemmed from the desire for women to assert themselves in the workplace. Celebrities and influential figures of the time, from business moguls to TV stars, popularized the trend. Fashion designers incorporated shoulder pads into various garments, experimenting with sizes and shapes. 
Some shoulder pads were subtle, while others were colossal, giving a distinctly angular and structured look. Whether you loved or loathed them, there was no denying the impact of shoulder pads on 80s fashion. Number 11. Caboodle. Speaking of 80s fashion and accessories, here's another iconic item. The caboodle. It wasn't just a box. It was a girl's best friend, a portable storage solution that held a world of treasures. The caboodle was a vibrant plastic case with compartments perfect for organizing makeup, jewelry, and other essentials. Its varied sizes and shapes catered to different storage needs, often featuring mirrors, trays, and drawers. Girls adored the caboodle for its versatility. Whether for sleepovers or everyday use, it was a trendy way to keep things neat and stylish. Next is Michael Jackson's legendary moonwalk. In 1983, during a television performance of his hit song Billie Jean, he introduced the world to this mesmerizing dance move. The moonwalk was pure magic. Michael seemed to glide backwards across the stage effortlessly, creating an illusion of walking on the moon. It was a gravity-defying spectacle that left audiences stunned and amazed. He perfected it with smoothness and precision, and it quickly became his trademark move. The moonwalk sparked a global dance crazy. Kids and adults everywhere tried to mimic it, attempting to slide backwards with the same funny seat as the king of pop. Last on the list is The Breakfast Club and John Hughes movies. In the 1980s, the entertainment industry was buzzing with creativity, offering various movies and TV shows. Amidst this landscape emerged the iconic filmmaker John Hughes, whose movies resonated deeply with audiences of the time. John Hughes became a household name due to his unique ability to capture the essence of teenage life in the 80s. One of his most famous works, The Breakfast Club, brought together a diverse group of high school students, highlighting their struggles, dreams, and friendships. Movies like Sixteen Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Pretty in Pink became touchstones of 80s cinema, celebrated for their authentic portrayal of teenage experiences. That's all for today. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.